Good morning, good morning, and good morning. Happy Monday. Start the week off. Many blessings to you. So uh, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So hope everyone had an awesome 4th of July weekend. Hope you had some rest, relaxation, peace. Uh, hopefully you had some fun, some safe fun. Uh, hopefully all everyone's members are intact and everything is good to go there. So excited to start a new week. Good morning, Crystal. Good morning, Amanda. So we are just kicking off another week. And I don't know what the subject's going to be this week. We're just rolling with scripture. So this may be an abstract week without a simple one focus subject. But I promise you the subject as always will be uh, the Lord. It will be godly. It'll be scriptural. So we will stand in that um, because he is worthy of it all for sure. So a lot of times that Jesus came while he was humbled as a man and, and was walking the earth, a lot of what he did was confront the true religious system of the day. So Jesus came preaching, teaching, and healing, and he was confronting the religious system of the day. Now, reason why is because, good morning, Janine, is because the religious system of the day was failing the people. So although it was growing and it was full and there was people that were elevated, um, the Pharisees, the Sanhedrin, the Sadducees, they were an elevated group of people that received a lot of praise and they were never intended to receive praise and they were starting to become set apart from the people and the people were still struggling in sin. So in pain and sickness, Meredith, Brother Nathan. So there was a lot that was happening. And good morning, Ruth. And there was a lot that was happening during that time. So when Jesus came, preaching, teaching, and healing, he also came to confront the religious system because the religious system was failing the people. Good evening, Christine. So today we are going to be in Mark chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. If you've never known or never heard this before uh, in theological circles, uh, Brother Rob Pixley, Emily, good morning. So um, the, the each one of the Gospels had a theme on how they looked at Jesus. As a matter of fact, from Genesis to Revelation, there are ways that we could depict those books and see how they edify Jesus. And the book of Mark is a Gospel where they look at Jesus as, through Mark's lens, as the servant. So you will oftentimes see Mark sharing stories about Jesus as he was the servant, because that's how he saw them. The great thing is, with Jesus, is just like he said uh, when God confronted Moses at a burning bush, he said, I am all that I am. So Jesus can be the servant, the Messiah, the healer, the rock, the pillar, the fire. He can be all those things, because he is everything. He is worthy of it all. He is the lamb that was slain. He's also the scapegoat that took the sins away. He is everything. That is why he is the Messiah. That is why he's the Mashiach. That is why he is the true anointed leader. That is why he's the anointed one. That is why he's the alpha, the omega, the beginning, the end, the first, and the last. Oh, we can go, we can go, we can go. But today, Mark chapter 3, Brother Daniel so Jesus went into the synagogue again and noticed a man with a deformed hand. Since it was the Sabbath, Jesus' enemies watched him closely. If he healed the man's hand, they planned to accuse him of working on the Sabbath. So Jesus said to the man with the deformed hand, Come and stand in front of everyone. Well, my brother. So come and stand in front of everyone. Then he turned to his critics and asked, Does the law permit good deeds um, good deeds on the Sabbath or is it a day for doing evil is this a day to save life or destroy it but they wouldn't answer him he looked around at them angrily and was deeply saddened by the hardness of their hearts and he said to the man hold out your hand so the man held out his hand and it was restored at once the Pharisees went away and met with the supporters of Herod 
to plot on how to kill Jesus. So, Jesus comes to confront the religious system, and he already knows the hardness of their hearts. That's why he is there in that day and age. There is no coincidence to his timing. His timing was perfect because God is perfect. So he stands there before them since it was a Sabbath. They're watching him closely because they know he's going to heal. And they're so caught up in their religion, they wanted to accuse him. And why did they want to accuse him? Why did they want him dead? Because the followers were beginning to follow him and not them. So they were very filled with rage and envy and anger. And they wanted Jesus dead because he took the attention away from them. And they wanted to be exalted. And man was not intended to be exalted. But the religious system of that day was failing the people because the people were still hurting. Now, what I share, Liliana, so what I share today, what we look at and how this applies to us today is is the same. So Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he is confronting at this moment the religious system because if you didn't notice, When COVID came, Satan bad, God good. So even though a bad thing happened, God is doing a mighty work through it in case you missed it. So God has allowed the building of the church to be temporarily moved out of the way so the relationship could be enhanced. So right now the relationship through the aid of the Holy Spirit has been poured out in a mighty and special way. And people that weren't sharing the gospel before are sharing the gospel now. And people that didn't really have a, a super strong relationship because work and all that stuff got in the way is starting to work out their relationship. People that were so busy working didn't have time to spend with their families. Guess what? Kids are home. So God allowed certain things to happen. But through that, in a relationship, he managed to shift things tremendously because he wanted the relationship with him first to be restored. He wanted the relationship in the families to be restored. He wanted the relationship with our neighbors to be restored. So he is working on relationship. Even during a time where it looks like there's so much craziness and chaos going on, the reason why Satan and God are not equals. But Satan sees what's going on. He knows he's running out of time. He knows God is restoring a right standing relationship through the blood of Jesus Christ. That veil that was torn down in the temple that separated the holies to the holies. He is Lord. He is pouring out his spirit. And that relationship is being enhanced across the entire globe simultaneously. Because there is a fresh outpouring that is coming from the Lord. That is pouring out his spirit. And here we are. Jesus stood before the Pharisees. And said, does the law permit good deeds on the Sabbath or is it a day for doing evil? Is this a day to save life or destroy it? Because the Pharisees were getting rich and fat and while the people were struggling and suffering and they had no compassion. So Jesus is calling on us then and now to love one another, have compassion on one another, to be able to have right standing with one another. So this is what we're called to do, a relationship with him that spills out onto our family, spills out to our neighbors, spills out to our co-workers. This is about relationship. And God is in a season right now where he is restoring that in a mighty and special way. So the man held out his hand and it was restored. So Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. So he said, Greater things you will do if I go and be with the Father. You could ask me for anything in my name and I will do it so the Son may bring glory to the Father. Yes, you could ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. He also said, these are the signs that are accompany those who believe. And when he said that, he said, they'll cast out demons. They'll speak in new languages. They will uh, handle snakes with safety. They will drink, if they drink anything poisonous, it will not harm them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. So, while we're out there preaching, teaching, and healing, which we are called to do, there is accompanying signs that will follow. And those accompanying signs that Jesus pours out through us are because they are confirmation that Jesus Christ is Lord. And he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So, he is still healing. He is still healing. He is still blessing. He is still pouring out his spirit. He is still changing lives. He is still healing on the Sabbath because the Sabbath wasn't made for man. Or the Man wasn't made for the Sabbath. Sabbath was made for man. So it was a time where we could reconnect in a relationship with God. But that shouldn't. That relationship with God should still be preaching, teaching, and healing. 
That wasn't supposed to be exempt from the Sabbath. That was the purpose of the Sabbath. But the religion got in the way and they missed the relationship. Jesus was sad by the hardness of their hearts. And right now I believe Jesus is sad with the hardness of our hearts because this is time for a relationship. This is a time for unity. This is a time that we love one another, not a time where religion is in the way. And I'm not knocking the church, but what I'm saying in general, if what we conceive to be religious things, our religious acts, our relig and we're doing all that stuff, which is great, but we're missing the relationship, we may have missed the whole point. And Jesus isn't here to smite us or beat us down for it. He's here to remind us that this is about a relationship with him. This is about a relationship with him that spills over to loving one another. Jesus said this new command I give to you, love one another. So today, I want us to grasp that Jesus looked around at the Pharisees angrily and he was deeply saddened by the hardness of their hearts because he couldn't believe that those that were chosen to share the love of God, to share the essence of God, had missed it. And they were so caught up in themselves and so caught up in the religion that they missed the relationship. They really missed the relationship because he was standing in front of them. But we still can do the same thing today. We can miss it if we get caught up in all the other stuff, all the other pomp and circumstance, all the other new building project funds. If we do all that and the people of the sheep of the flock or scattered and hurting, we may have missed it because Jesus didn't die on the cross for simply for bigger buildings. Jesus died on the cross so we could have a right standing relationship restored through his son. So Jesus died on the cross so we would be purchased with a price. His blood was a high cost, but in that, all hail King Jesus. In that, the relationship was restored. The veil in the temple was torn. The veil that used to hide the glory on Moses' face was thrown away. And we no longer need a high priest. Jesus came because the high priests were in the way. So this is an opportunity for us right now to realize that when Jesus came, he came so we could just come before him and cry out, Abba, Father. So, Heavenly Father, we just praise you, we glorify you, we lift you up. It's in Jesus' name, Lord. We just pray that religion doesn't get in the way, but we have a right standing relationship because of what you accomplished on the cross. So, Father God, we just pray that you open our eyes, our ears, our heart, and our soul. Let us embrace the fullness of who you are and who we are. So, Father God, we just pray that we operate from our identity and not to it. Religion is working your way to something, but a relationship is the fact that you already poured out your spirit so we can be reconciled to you. Lord Jesus, your last prayer before going to the cross as we all become one, just as you and the Father are one. So pour out your spirit on us today. Reconcile us, restore us, bring us closer to you, and help us share the goodness of who you are. Lord, the word says, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of the testimony and loved not their lives all the way to the point they were afraid to die. So Lord, give us that belief. Give us that belief that will go out and share your goodness on all costs no matter what, because there's people sick, there's people that are just like this man, that are sitting in the midst of religion, and they're still hurting. So right now, we bind and break any spirit of addiction in the name of Jesus Christ. We bind and break any spirit of affliction in the name of Jesus Christ. We bind and break any spirit of disease in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, you are the healer, Jehovah Rophi, it's just who you are. So pour out your spirit on the ch your children at the sound of my voice right now. Just pour out your spirit and bless them with your presence, Lord. It's your presence. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy to be lifted up, Lord. We just trust in you. We glorify you. We love you, Lord. You said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways and seek my face, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. So, Lord, our land needs a healing, and we need the presence of the healer. So pour out your spirit, Lord. Pour out your spirit on your children today. Refresh us, renew us, restore us. Just love on us, Lord. Teach us to love one another in Jesus' name. So the two things that we know for certain, man, day, Miss Betty, the two things you know for certain, and that is Jesus loves you, Clarence loves you. You can't do anything about either, so get used to it. Feel free to share this publicly, privately. Thank you for helping me break the algorithms. But what's bigger than the algorithms is breaking the spirit of religion, breaking the spirit of chaos, breaking the spirit 
of wickedness that's running rampant across this earth. So we still have the authority because Jesus gave us the authority to do so. So love one another, pray for one another, confess your sins and faults to one another, for the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. And all that means in non-religious jargon is be good to each other. It's pretty simple to do. And if we pray for one another, we'll encourage one another, we'll lift one another up, the climate of our globe can change. So that is up to us. He gave us free will to do so. Love you. God bless.